So to develop our statistical model, let's start by dividing our time axis into many, many tiny subintervals. So here we've drawn the time axis in blue and we've divided up into these many tiny subintervals and we have this stimulus, the red symbol. And within each subinterval, either one spike occurs or no spikes occur. And we modeled this last time, we talked about this on Monday, as a coin flip. So in each subinterval, we flip our coin and we get either tails, which we indicate with the symbol T, or heads with the symbol H. And we decided that we would interpret the H's, in this case, as representing spikes. So that's our statistical model of spiking, these coin flips. We flip, in this case, uh, a coin, which we might conclude here is biased because we have so many T's and so few H's. So we flip our biased coin once for each bin. We get e either uh, heads, which is a spike, or tails, no spike. And that's our model. And again, we think that this coin is probably biased because we see so many T's here and very few H's. If it were unbiased, we would expect 50-50, half tails, half heads. And we consider the idea that the spiking model is random. And what exactly does this mean, that the spiking model is random? But what we mean by this is that the, we know the neuron spikes within each interval with some probability, but we don't know exactly when it will spike. So here is our time axis divided up into tiny bins, and we could choose one of the bins and ask, in this bin, will the neuron spike here or not? And the true answer is we don't know. We don't know if the neuron's going to spike in that bin, and to answer that, we have to flip our coin and see what happens. So there's some probability that when we flip our coin, uh, we get uh, an H, which represents a spike. But we won't know for sure if we observe a spike uh, until we flip that coin. So in that sense, the, the neuron spiking is random. We don't know what's going to happen. We have some probability of a spike, but we don't know when it, if a spike will occur for sure. We have to flip our coin first and find out. So a question we can then ask is, is neural spiking random? And to answer that, let's consider some, some data that's shown here. So we have uh, neural activity recorded in three trials. And in this case, we deliver the same stimulus to the neuron in each trial, and we have the same conditions. Let's say the, same, the neuron's in the same bath living in a Petri dish, so we haven't changed the environment at all. But even though we have the same stimulus in the same conditions, the spike trains are different. And we see that the spikes occur at different times. And in this case, it's difficult to predict exactly when a spike will occur. It may occur in one bin or the other. It's a coin flip, and we don't know for sure uh, what will happen. So again, we can model it in this coin flip sense, where we have some probability of a spike at each moment in time, but we don't know for sure what will happen. We have to flip our coin. <clears throat> and one thing we might notice is that it's much easier for us to guess the total number of spikes in a trial. And we could count up the number of tick marks in each one of these trials, and what we find in this case is it's about 12. So there are about 12 spikes for a trial, although they occur at random times. And we can also compute things like the average firing rate. In this case, let's say we record the data for half a second. So we divide 12 spikes by half a second, and we get 24 hertz. So within this 500 millisecond window, this half second window, the number of spikes is about the same. It's 12, and the firing rate is about the same, although the times where these spikes occur is random. So another question we can ask is, how does this spike train encode information about the stimulus? So the neuron is responding, following the stimulus at the initial time, this uh, red symbol, that's our stimulus. And the answer is we don't know, and it's an active research area. But there are two ideas about how spike trains encode information. One is that the rate encodes the information. So the firing rate, how quickly this neuron fires within that uh, 500 millisecond window, is what uh, encodes the information. And what matters in this rate code is the total number of spikes divided by the duration, in this case half a second. And it doesn't really matter the exact temporal pattern, whether a spike occurs uh, here at the first moment in time or at the next time bin or at the next time bin. That doesn't matter. What matters more is the number of spikes that occur across this uh, 500 millisecond window. An alternative hypothesis is what's called the temporal code, again, for how neurons encode information. And in this case, the pattern of spiking encodes the information. So it's the exact pattern that matters. And here, uh, we care about the intervals between spikes and whether this spike occurs at the very beginning of the trial or somewhere in the middle. So in the temporal code, the exact temporal pattern does matter. Uh, an open question, which is correct? It's not known. Which of these, uh, how the neuron encodes information? Unknown, uh, an active research area.